Okay. What's going on, everyone? My name is Jason Vincent. I'm a wedding and portrait photographer based in Northwest Arkansas. And today I'm talking with Nikki Klosser, who is uh, part of the SBE, so the Sue Bryce Education Team. She runs a podcast. Uh, she does some live stuff for them. And she also does a lot of behind the scenes stuff. In addition, she's also an amazing portrait photographer, um, currently based out of Michigan. Um, and yeah, so Nikki, how's it going? Hi, I'm great. Thanks for having me. This is yeah, awesome. totally. Um, so one of the main reasons that I wanted to talk to you today is because um, recently in the latest edition of the SBE live conference, Sue gave a talk called Speak, and it's all about bringing people up and getting them um, active in the education community and speaking and stuff like that and kind of representing their brand, but also um, just educating people. And you're kind of a prime example of that because you started off as like a student of Sue Bryce and now yeah. you've grown into this major role um, in her education platform. So can you talk to us a little bit about kind of what that looked like starting off as like a student and kind of what it looked like sure. in that journey? Yeah. So one of the cool things about Sue is that she like loves to lift people up in general. She will find your superpower and help you like just elevate. So for example, her assistant who started out, Caitlin Timmons started out as her assistant. She's also a musician, but one day Caitlin was like kind of interested in you know, just video or whatever. And Sue was like, here, just do some behind the scenes footage for me filming, you know? And then Caitlin was just like playing around and Sue was teaching her more and more. And now she's like this most amazing, she does all of the promos for the Portrait Masters Conference for Sue Bryce Education. Like she's absolutely incredible. Yeah, and, and they always you know, turn out so well. Yes, totally. And so she just finds a way, like her, her assistant in Seattle, showed interest in makeup. So Sue trained her to be a makeup artist. And now that's her career, her business of being a makeup artist. Like she will always try to find ways to elevate people. She doesn't just like find good people and try to like hold on to them forever. She knows that when she finds great people, they're eventually going to leave her and like, you know, do different things or whatever. But, but she's like, so okay with that as long as people are doing what they love and in their like full power, you know? Mm -hmm. So when it came to speak, a lot of people had been showing interest in just becoming an educator in the photography world or just speaking even like in net for networking, for example. So a lot of what we teach in terms of marketing on Sue Bryce education, a lot of it has to do with networking and finding your voice and not even just networking in like groups or whatever, but online and that sort of thing and finding your voice and being able to be confident to talk about yourself and what you do. So it was like kind of twofold, like speaking about you know, to the education, to photography education part of it. And then also just finding your voice in general to speak about yourself and what you do and how you can help people and, and, you know, in terms of booking new clients and that sort of thing. So I guess that was a really long roundabout way of saying that Sue just truly wants to elevate people. And for me, I mean, I started out as, well, okay, to make a long story short, I reached out to Sue in 2012 to do a photo shoot of my friend who had breast cancer, my friend Jill. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I knew we were in Paris and Sue was doing a documentary and a photo shoot of my friend Jill and told her story called The Light That Shines. Then Sue moved to Seattle and I ended up just being her assistant for a while. So I was in, in the background building my own business. I had quit my job as a social worker and I was building my own business and then just started assisting Sue. And then she knew like what my superpowers were or whatever. And she just kind of helped elevate me along the way. And now the next thing I knew, I'm helping host the Portrait Masters Conference and doing the Portrait System podcast for her. And so, yeah, she she took me from, okay, and she won't take any credit for any of this. She always <laughs> says that people, you do the work. You're the one who's doing it. I'm just teaching you and showing you what you're, you know, what you can do sort of mm -hmm. thing. Like she'll never take credit for changing people's lives. It's just... Although I, I give her a lot of credit, but she won't take it. So anyways, but that's just how she is. She just loves to elevate people. Yeah. So whenever you were um, kind of being an assistant and being mentored by her and stuff, you were obviously still in the process of building your portrait brand. Yeah. When, when did you make the transition into the education side of it? Is that something that you've always been passionate about or you is know, it? I, it's funny you ask that because I don't even... I guess I didn't even really realize I kind of am in the education side of it. I still see myself as this like hustling portrait photographer, even though I have made quite a transition. So I, I mean, really, it wasn't until the last two years, because I, I mean, I think sometimes people will look at, well, like you or Sue's assistant and you, you know, worked with or whatever, but 
there was nothing that she taught me that isn't taught on the website, on the Sue Rice education website. It's not like she like held some super secret like mm -hmm. thing to teach me. Like anything that I've ever learned from her, like she gives it all on the website. Like it's just everything is there. So as far as I guess, I mean, I it really wasn't until the last year or two that I've cut back on shooting a lot to do um, to help with Sue Bright's education more and do some of the lives and that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. from 2012 until 2018, I was just like full-time photographer doing my thing. Actually, I take that back. I was still a social worker in 2012. I didn't quit till 2013. Okay. So yeah. as your, as your role with SBE, you do, you host the podcast. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. It's called the portrait system. And I interview like real life photographers who have built their business from the start. Sometimes it's people who quit their job, you know, a job that they hated and just built their way up. Sometimes it's people who went to photography school I and mean, from all around the world, different types of people, different personalities, different genres and how they did it. How sometimes we talk about how they marketed their pricing, just everything. And, you know, everything from stories of someone who was charging $50 a shoot and just like, it was literally sucking the life out of her to now <laughs> making a $2,000 average yeah. per shoot, you know? So it just, it's really inspiring just to hear stories from everyday people who have become successful as photographers. And it's just so fun to hear all these success stories. And it's really, really cool. I yeah, love it. That's awesome. Um, I've yeah. heard of, I've heard a handful of episodes and they're great. Yeah. Thank Very you. Good. Thank yeah. you. And, and I have, I have interviewed, you know, I interviewed the, most of the speakers who are at the Por portrait masters conference. Mm -hmm. So like Ange McCabe and, um, Peter Hurley and M Michelle Celentano, you know, just a bunch of, and, and what I did is I wanted to hear their stories from the beginning. Like, how did you do it? Were you always really good at business or, you know, cause obviously everyone starts somewhere. And so it was really fun to hear like Jerry Jonas is another one, like just hearing their stories and, and where they started from, like Jerry started, his first studio was in the back of a chicken shop, like a chicken <laughs> shack shop, like literally. So yeah, very high end. Yes. And so it was just really cool to kind of get down to just the, the personal side of, of all of the speakers. And mm -hmm. so it, it's really a combination of just everyday photographers and their stories. And then also some of the, you know, more bigger name educators for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so now it's kind of circling back to the portrait masters live conference. How do you mm -hmm. feel that went? Cause obviously it wasn't like on the radar to even do it. It was kind right. of just like adapting to the times and mm -hmm figuring it out and making it work. Um, I've watched a good handful of videos. I think they went really well, but how do you feel like um, it went in general in comparison to like the live event? And then also how do you feel like the students took it in general? Yeah, yeah. You know, so George Varanakis has been doing photography conferences and events for so many years. And I, I mean, when we knew that it couldn't be live, he was like, I'm pivoting, we're doing this online. Like he just knew that that mm -hmm. was what was going to happen. And we just have such a strong team and everyone just sort of like jumped in and, you know, as we were going through it, as it was happening, we were like, we think it's going well, but it's so hard to say. And we were only going based off of like the students' feedback and what mm -hmm. we were hearing, we were getting really great feedback. So that's always makes you feel good as you're like going through, you know, it keeps you pumped and motivated. But overall, it was it was really fun and it was way less chaotic because when you are hosting, a, you know, 600 people at a resort and, and managing a lot more that like, goes into that. Yeah. there's so <laughs> much that goes on. And sometimes we're, we're recording it and we would do the live trade show demos. So we were like, okay, well, th that's the team, you know, the development team for the conference was like, how can we try to give the exact same experience? online that we did in person mm -hmm. and and it was funny because we you know for the conference it was after parties and happy hours we did a huge dance party you know and we're like how are we going to do this and we had a zoom dance party and you I had to dress up like it. your favorite icon yeah. i was like i'm a little nervous like i kind of <laughs> feel like this is going to be stupid you know it was so much fun the, the camera it? would just clip to different people and their outfits and dancing. And it, it was, we had such a blast. It was so much fun. That's awesome. As, I wanted to hop in, but I did, I didn't have time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was so much fun, Jason. But you know, as far as the learning goes, it really was incredible. Like we got to watch four different photographers from Sony Canon and Pro Photo. Mm -hmm. And we got to watch 
them shoot the exact same model. They each had 30 minutes to show what they could do with that model. It was so cool to watch, just like being a fly in the wall and seeing how everyone shoots on top of all of the, the speakers and everything. So overall, I felt like it was really, really, really well done. But mm -hmm. I also wasn't watching from a student perspective. Mm -hmm. I was kind of behind the scenes, you know. Um, well, I take that back. I was watching from a student perspective because as I would introduce or see one of us, either Sue or I would introduce the next speaker, then we would kind of just chill and watch. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, the speakers were incredible and, you know, but I didn't get like the full fledged experience, but we got some really, really great feedback. So yeah, cool. that's very good. That's, that's awesome. Um, do you feel like the live thing worked well enough that it will be kind of like in the repertoire for the next few years and you'll just kind of keep it going? Or are you going to try and do live and in-person events and all that fun stuff or yeah, what do you, what do you, you see know, happening? I don't know. I don't even know how to answer that because I think it's still so up in the air with what's going on in the world. Like obviously in-person is, it's just such an amazing experience mm -hmm. and, and it's hard to, it's hard to replicate hard, that online. It, it, <laughs> it is. And I think we did the best that we possibly could as far as replicating. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know, Jason, I don't know where it's going to go. I mean, a lot of, a lot of what we, I, 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 although I bet you we will probably continue to do some live, some in, as once we can safely do in person, mm -hmm. I bet you we'll do a combination. Cause like right now we do the 12 week startup and I host that every Tuesday. I do a live coaching session to, based on what week it is. Like this week mm -hmm. is designing your marketing materials and then we do live. So Sue has all of the content ready. People watch it on the website and then they can come to the live coaching and ask questions. And I have special guests. And so I think we'll always do some sort of online live education based mm -hmm. on like the 12 week startup and Sue does a monthly like live shoot or whatever she chooses that through the month, SBE, so. like education side of it. Oh, I lost you. You froze up. Oh, am I, am I back? I don't know if that's me or you. Can you hear me? Ah. Are oh, you back? Sorry, you totally froze there for a second. Yeah, okay. that's through, sorry. Yes, that is through the Sue Bryce education part of it. As far as the portrait masters, I don't know. I'm going to have to ask George like he's a, he, he'll be the, the decision maker when it comes yeah. to if we, you know, continue online or in person. But I it's think it went so well. Yeah, I think it went so well that I wouldn't be surprised if we did do both. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So circling back a little bit um, more to you. So I, I don't I don't want to call you like a behind the scenes person because you're doing like the hosting and you're like hosting like all these live things and um, you're doing the podcast and stuff. But do you do anything like on the stage where you're actually speaking to the students or anything like that? And, and if not, do you see that being in your future? You know, not really. I, I don't really I'm not creating like new content that I'm teaching people so much unless we're talking about like work and life balance stuff about being a mom and a photographer. Mm hmm you know, and, and just being an entrepreneur, trying to like manage it all that, that I feel comfortable speaking to, but honestly, I don't see myself as a photographer educator so much more of, I share my experiences and I like to interview other people about, you know, their experiences. And yeah. I, I don't feel like my superpower is in so much teaching and creating content and educating. Mm -hmm. I feel like my superpower is more of getting stories out of other people and like drawing out the education just, from the educators. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. Cause I mean, I still see myself as a student. I'm still learning and growing every day with, you know, I mean, I can always talk to my experience, but I don't know. I, I mean, we'll see what happens yeah. from here. Well, I mean, but... Work-life balance is a thing that I feel like all photographers struggle with at some point in time. So it'd definitely be something oh, yeah. that would be beneficial for people uh, touching on that. Cause you do the portrait um, podcast. You also have your own podcast, correct? And it's kind of in relation to the work-life balance thing. I do. Yeah. It's called busy as a mother. Okay. <laughs> and, and I, inter I interview people and just on different topics mm -hmm. and just how to kind of, and some of them are just my, you know, me talking about, but that's something I feel like I've mastered. Well, okay. I should say that I have my days when I'm like, Oh my God, <laughs> seriously, I'm going to die. But, um, but overall I feel like I've done really well with that having, cause I have two studios, one in Seattle, one in Michigan, and then my two little kids and you know it i've had to really put in some systems and just really create some boundaries in my life and mm -hmm. so that's something that i that i definitely teach although i've put the busy as a mother on hold i think there's like 20 episodes right now but i put it on hold for a couple of weeks while i was um getting through like the conference and just doing the portrait system and that sort of thing so and moving in between soon. right didn't you exactly just, yes. <laughs> just move <laughs> yes so so it's not like you haven't had your plate full right plus there's yeah. this whole like 
pandemic quarantine thing going on which oh my gosh so <laughs> insane what a crazy world we live in right now awesome um so. so is there where can people find you outside of like the podcast and stuff where can they find like nikki Klosser? yeah uh, my instagram is just my name uh nikki Klosser, two s's my last name and then um nikki Klosser.com. And then if you go to busyasamotherpodcast.com, that's where my Busy as a Mother stuff is. And then, yeah, the portrait system is on every podcast platform. Just make sure you don't Google the or search the portrait masters because it's called the portrait system and people get portrait confused system. and they're like, I can't, I can't find, find it. it. <laughs> yeah, so. Awesome. All right, well, thank you, Nikki. I appreciate you hopping on here with me and uh, I hope you have a good rest of your day. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Yeah, Take care. Sure. Bye.